Every time a new obituary is published in the newspaper, a new ghost has been doxxed. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Ghoulish. I am Max Booth, a host. And today on the show we have John Baltisbilgel, author of the, the poetry collection called The Configuration Discordant. An exploration of poetry through the lens of moodle, madness, and monsters. He's also the editor-in-chief of Madness Hill Press, and he's a, he's a good friend of mine who lives close by in Austin, Texas. And today, on Ghoulish, we're talking about Kaiju. What does that mean? I don't know. I guess I'm going to have to ask him. On the podcast. <laughs> okay, l- l- let's go. Hey, John. Hey, Max. Do you want to talk about some kaiju? You know I do. So, I guess question one would be, what 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 does that mean? A uh, kaiju literally means strange beast. Strange beast. Now, now I know you are a bit of an expert on the subject, and I'll be honest, I I'm going into this kind of blind. If I had to define like what a kaiju is, I would say it's a a, a giant monster that kind of wrecks a city. That's my knowledge of it. Do they have to be giant? So. I would say, you know, strictly speaking, kaiju aren't necessarily giant. However, uh, just because of the Toho Godzilla franchise and and the way kaiju have evolved in pop culture, yeah, they're they're giant monsters. Is that a kaiju in the background? That's my fucking dog. <laughs> uh, she. She is a bold English bulldog, and she waits. She is quiet all day until I get on a call, and then she's like, "Hey, let me sing the song of my people." She sounds still fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. She uh, she does uh, she does sound work and voiceover work for uh, for Exorcist and Demon movies. Yeah, I was gonna say, like in the scene <laughs> of the movie when they play back the recording, that's what they heal. Yeah, no, that's the thing. Is that all these children, they're not possessed by demons. They're possessed by a bulldog. <laughs> it's way less terrifying, so they always make it a demon. But no, it's just, it's just a bulldog. I'll be honest. I don't even know what you answered because I was so focused on what that noise was. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. It sounded so scaly. <laughs> Poor dog. So, so Kaiju. Okay, great. Yeah. How did you uh, get interested in in these things? I wish there was a cool story behind that, but it's like I was a kid that liked watching uh, like I was super into dragons because I was a nerdy little piece of shit. And uh, my family got me some Godzilla VHSs and I like wore out the tape on them, watching them over and over again, Uh, specifically Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla and Godzilla versus uh, later on when it came out, Godzilla versus Biollante. What the hell is that? Oh, shit. Biollante is my favorite. Uh, so Biollante is a rose bush that a scientist uh, <laughs> uses the DNA from Godzilla to uh, <laughs> mutate the rose bush. And then that rose bush is possessed by the ghost of the scientist's dead daughter who was killed by Godzilla. And then it fights Godzilla. <laughs> What? How, how does that look? Is it a giant bush? It's no, like, look, <laughs> Google, Google image search by latte. It looks sick. How do you spell <laughs> that? B I O L L A N T E. Okay. This is a professional podcast. I'm Googling. Oh my God. It looks awesome. This is so I know, cool. it's rad. so cool. I'm actually, I actually have a uh, Biolante sleeve planned with my tattoo artist. Nice. I thought you were lying to me, but that's a real thing. That's a real thing. And it's here's the crazy <laughs> thing. It's only the second most bizarre Godzilla monster of origin. Okay, well let's get into the most bizarre one. It's Space Godzilla. 
Okay. Now, uh, Biolante, you don't know why the rosebush is possessed by the scientists, or you know, but the characters don't know about the the ghost thing. They don't know how buck wild shit is. Space Godzilla, which is another real monster, they're sitting in a lab, and a woman says, "Well, it's obvious what happened. Obviously, when Godzilla fought Mothra, some DNA from Godzilla got stuck on Mothra and went into space, and it went in a black hole, and then came out a white hole." It then touched some space rocks, and that space Godzilla. <laughs> so like, they... hold the hold the goddamn phone, lady. You can't just say that's obvious. <laughs> so do they just go around calling him Space Godzilla? They don't come up with yes. an official name. That's amazing. Okay, I mean, look, the original in Japanese. It's possible he has some like super meaningful name. Yeah, but. Like no cover. If you look at the movie, it's Godzilla versus Space Godzilla. What what is the explanation for uh, regular uh, Godzilla? Like the original Godzilla, how did he become a a thing? So, like the origin of Godzilla himself uh, isn't usually like super well explained. Um, in various you know, in various different media, you have Godzilla as something that's fairly modern due to radiation. But uh, there's a comic book in which Godzilla fights Zeus and like causes uh, uh, causes Pompeii. So, uh, but the the thing is, the reason I love kaiju so much is beyond just giant monsters fighting the. The original Godzilla movie and a couple of the others that have followed have been legitimately good, meaningful movies. Uh, Giant monsters fighting is always fun, but I think Kaiju are most effective when there's some deeper meaning and uh, social commentary going on. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Is Would King Kong be considered one of these uh, Kaiju? Yeah, uh, King okay. Kong is a Kaiju. Uh, okay. He he's interesting because uh, King Kong has. If you watch King Kong in his movies, he's actually pretty small compared to like other giant monsters. Yeah, like he can essentially hold a lady in his hand, and her feet and head will stick out from either end. Uh, whereas if you look at Godzilla, especially in the newer movies, he's on par with skyscrapers. So when you have like. Kong versus Godzilla, you have to resize them to a pretty extreme level. It's odd. Somehow I've gone my whole life without seeing a Godzilla movie. That is, uh, that's a thing that happened, I guess. That's, uh, I don't, I don't know that I would say it's bad, but I do think you're missing out on both something that is, could be culturally important and uh, I mean, again, giant monsters duking it out is just fun at the end of the day. Now, when you talk about Godzilla, you keep saying – you keep using the uh, the he, him pronoun. Is that canon? Does, do. does Godzilla have a dick? Um, Man, I, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and say it's it's not canon. Uh, there is a baby Godzilla, but it's never, you know, explored whether or not Godzilla uh, was fucked or was the fucker. Yeah. And uh, and the the American like 2001 or 1998, I think, uh, Godzilla movie that everyone likes to make fun of was definitely a female that laid eggs, but uh, it was later canonized that that monster was in fact not Godzilla. Oh my god! Okay. Yeah, there's politics and and scandal within the Zillaverse. So, like the main plot of these movies, if I'm not mistaken, is Godzilla comes to a city and wrecks shit, right? Yeah, that's yeah. Usually, okay. So before the the wrecking happens, where is Godzilla hanging out? Do, does he have in like, the ocean? Land? Godzilla's aquatic. Oh shit. No, yeah, I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, Godzilla's Godzilla's a water critter. Uh, however, later, <laughs> later on, they do have a monster island where like all the kaiju are. Okay, which <laughs> just hanging like, out. 
Yeah, and that's it's funny to me because it'll be like, oh yeah, here's Monster Island where all the kaiju are. But as soon as they get to Japan, they just get so mad at each other. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Um, I think that there's uh, you know, food is extremely expensive in Japan. Just eating in general. Uh, so I think they're arguing over the bill. I don't think that's true. I. I, no, I have no clue. Um, but yeah, water critter. So he's just swimming around. That's interesting. Okay. Do you, it, I have a difficult time imagining what any aquatic animal does in the ocean. They just, hate, I guess, just what we do. Any they animal. mostly just hiss and poop and then breathe in their pee and poop. That's why they're so mad. Yeah, I mean, like, it's not a great life. I wish I could live in the ocean. What about so you? So that you could breathe in poop? Yeah, I'm always shitting, but it's just going down to the ground. It's really frustrating. It's a waste. Yeah, I could be recycling that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. The The thing is, uh, with the Godzilla plots, uh, either Godzilla saves the day by fighting off a monster that wants to destroy everything, or Godzilla is on his own. Um, the ones where Godzilla is a solo monster are, in my opinion, less fun to watch, but far superior films. Okay, that makes sense, kind of. I watched, uh, shit, which one was it? See, I can't even, I've watched all of them so many times, I can't keep their names straight. How many movies uh, are there? There's 38? Oh my god. I could be, could be missing a few or adding a few. Uh, but at the very end of the movie, after Godzilla fights off the space monster, the scientist says, well, once again, Godzilla has protected us, even though we tried to kill it. But doctor, if we keep trying to destroy Godzilla, why does he protect us? I guess there's just some Godzilla in all of us. <laughs> and then it like pans over to Godzilla, destroying Tokyo in a nuclear holocaust. <laughs> it's like okay, all right. I guess I guess that's one way to end your movie. <laughs> so all the all these movies are they are they connected? Like, yep. Movie twenty, the previous nineteen took place in that universe. Yeah, pretty much. Oh um, my god, is he attacking some... the same city? Yeah, they need to move. Tokyo. Oh, they need to move Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, destroy me nineteen times. Shame on me. It, it, well, it makes you wonder if they have, like, Godzilla insurance. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I brought this up in, like, the Marvel Universe. Like, hey, do you guys have Hulk insurance for when Hulk just, like, destroys the city? You would and have at to. One, yes. No, like, they actually say, like, Iron Man at one point says, yeah, I offer Stark insurance is offers Hulk insurance. I don't know how anyone could continue living in a place where a kaiju continuously just destroys everything. It does seem like bad real estate. Yeah. Now, is he just it when he does all this damage? Is he just having like a like a roid fit, and he just wants to destroy anything in his path, or is he specifically specifically like I want to kill these human beings? So. It, again, it kind of matters on the media you're consuming at the time. Um, a lot of times what's happening is a alien race is mind-controlling Godzilla. What? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's, the thing that, that's the thing that not only happens, but happens really, really often. How did I not know this? <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Do you see why I love these dumb movies so much? Can you go a bit deeper into the plot of one of these alien brainwashed uh, conflicts? I yeah, think, sure. I don't, I'm tr having a difficult time comprehending this. So in in one of the movies, uh, they're building a Godzilla theme park. You know, because he he kills hundreds of thousands of people every couple of years. Why not? Why not celebrate that? It's very similar to a uh, New York's nine uh, eleven theme park. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's Buck Wild. I I really I 
I really don't like that you can take pictures sitting in Osama's lap there, by the way. That made me uncomfortable. It, I do like how if you take the handle and smash the button held enough, his head falls off. That part's fun. Yeah. But <laughs> so they're building they're building this Godzilla theme park and uh things go south. And monsters attack. A bunch of monsters attack. It's never one. It's like a bunch. And uh, the three-headed dragon, King Ghidorah. Oh, him. Yes. Yeah. Uh, who is one of the big bads in the the newer Godzilla movie. Uh, he is usually like the shit fucker fucking everyone shit up. Uh, anyway, you find out that uh, aliens that look like giant roaches when they're not disguised as humans are building an antenna to control monsters' minds and destroy mankind uh, so that they can move their planet there. Like, they can move all their species there. Hell yeah. How do you think they got wind of Godzilla existing? I... I have no idea. They never explained that. Uh, My guess is that they're, like, cruising through the universe, like, looking for a habitable planet... And they happen to glance at Earth just, you know, one of the 38 fucking times Godzilla attacks <laughs> over the course of 60 years. Yeah. He's really uh, easily uh, susceptible to uh, brainwashing, huh? He's essentially Superman. Yeah, yeah. Does he have much of a intelligence? Um... You know, sometimes it's played up where he's he's making plans and strategizing. Uh, sometimes <laughs> I'm he's just a... I'm imagining like him drawing a map. Like, okay, I'll go down this way. I'll yeah. attack this building. <laughs> reading, reading the art of war. <laughs> uh, and other times it's just like pure animal instinct. But one of my favorite ones is uh, uh, one where Godzilla and Rodan need to fight i think it's king Ghidorah. it might be gigan but uh mothra comes in and starts talking to them and it shows godzilla and rodan arguing and then the like man it's so i can't like anytime i try to explain godzilla plots i'm like oh shit i just sound like a bad man uh then the two minuscule women who follow mothra around and translate for her talk about how godzilla and rodan are arguing because they don't, neither one of them wants to say, I'm sorry first. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds amazing. Wait, who is a Mothra? Is she also a kaiju? Yeah, yeah. She's a, she is a giant moth. Oh, uh, well, that makes surprised. sense. Yeah, yeah. Please tell me she's defeated by a light bulb. <laughs> kind of. Okay, uh, there's another moth monster that has electricity powers named Bactra that uh, <laughs> that often defeats Mothra or fights against Mothra, I should say. This is ridiculous. So, as a fan of dragons, what do you think of the band Imagine Dragons? Um, so I first encountered uh, Imagine Dragons uh, with a cover. That I was like, oh, hey, that's pretty, that's a tune. That's a tune, jaunty tune that I can swing my bum to. And uh, then I, I checked out the rest of their discography. And I was like, oh, this is, this is awful. This is, this is what happens when a band that makes jingles for commercials decides they want to move into rock and roll. Yeah. I have no opinions. I just... <laughs> It's a band. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of it. I here's the thing. Yeah. This happens to me a lot. Yeah. I'll hear of an amazing band name that sounds radical. And I'll be like, oh man, I have to listen to this, and then I will, and it's garbage trash for babies. What about the new radicals? What I I you said some words to me and I don't understand what any of them mean. Oh, that's okay. You a big fan of uh, Limp Biscuit, John? Massive fan of Limp Biscuit. Now that is a kaiju. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know how to respond to any of this. Um, I. I actually was really into new metal when it was big in the like early to mid nineties. Yeah. Or was it late? 
but I think it was uh, the late it, '90s because I was also a big new metal fan. Sadly, yeah. But like, even with like my love of these dumb dumb bands and their dumb dumb hair, I never liked Limp Bizkit. I uh, I did as a kid. I used to I used to think the song "Broke Stuff" was uh, speaking directly to me. Like, yeah, I would also like the "Broke Stuff." I feel like I feel like a lot of those bands are a little bit like musical theater. Like you start listening to it, like you listen to that stuff before you get into real music, and then eventually you say, "I would still like to listen to this, but I no longer want it to be about being a petulant fourteen-year-old." My thing is, like, I would like to listen to this, but I want no one to find out. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's uh, fair. That's how I am with Britney Spears. I have to assume most of these Godzilla movies have uh, new metal soundtracks. No. What the No, fuck? they all have classical soundtracks. Why wouldn't Break Stuff be playing as Godzilla <laughs> Break Stuff? Uh, the, latest, the latest movie, the 2019 Godzilla movie, had... Uh, the singer from System of a Down covering Blue Oyster Cult's Godzilla. Does that help? Does that make you feel a little better? Honestly, I'm intrigued because I like that band a lot and I like that song a lot. It's it's not a bad it's not a bad thing. I'm just saying it's yeah. it's the closest you're going to get in a Godzilla movie. Okay, I'm gonna have to check that out. I'm a I'm a big System of the Down fan. Yeah. John, you uh, once claimed that you write kaiju poetry, and uh, mm-hmm. I said, "John, I don't believe you." So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let my dogs go crazy in the background as you mm-hmm. read a an example of this. Okay, uh, so this is a a piece I wrote specifically for a a reading I did, uh, I think last month, maybe a month ago. I don't remember. Time, time is an illusion. Uh, filled only with Godzilla. I mean, that's how I keep track is uh, Godzilla attacks. Like, oh, must be must have been two years since the last one. Uh, this is called The God That Fears Death. It is a uh, poem from uh, my new book that's coming out in a week called The Configuration Discordant. And uh, it is it takes place in a 25 long poem story about three kaiju descending on uh, Texas to destroy it. Hell yeah. And uh, for those listening, the book is already out. So go ahead and check it out. Awesome. This is called, in case I didn't say it before and forgot, uh, The God That Fears Death. Exploding out of chaotic struggles and externalized pain wrought messiness, three come against peace and calm to create something else agony. Words fail a poet's tongue, the sweetness of unimpaired clashing, chaotic battle of tipped viciousness, moving with supernatural speed, a lashing volatile hate against the cold armor that repelled armies time and time again. Three tails striking out, leveling Austin, one fond memory at a time, even nature cannot live. Leveling Mount Benel now flattened into a plain-like Blank paper notebook ready to record notes and poetry. If only the death could stop long enough, something sweet could come. Exoskeleton shrieks and protesting the mouse of claws intrusiveness comes in tent creation. God, jambalaya, crawfish, snake, and more. Jipe must band with chow chui tliche, become defender of a world it hates to survive the god that flies and crushes. How do titans do this? How do they broker peace in the middle of wanton destruction, fiery revelry, but Jipe fears death, the death that comes for those that stand against the feathered serpent, him, Quextaquadl. Chao Chuutliche, for her part in this, the da- desires no pain. The strife is not her goal in this battle, our guardian here and now, but will she accept the new pleas shrieked from the forlorn damaged her Jipe? She considers this. Weighing her options, Jipe claws have left riveted wounds in her flanks and heart. Can she kill the snake on her own without help from the wounded? Possibly, or not. But a three-way fight has proven deadly. With toss a filled mane, Chao Chu Liche agrees to this truce, two rage against one, but the one cares not. Fighting with one or two or a thousand, it doesn't matter to Quextaquadl, bring the blessed carnage. Even though the snake can fly into the air and shun the earth, the salamander searing breath, ray of death, 
can reach the clouds and bring him back down. No escape for him. And once he's grounded, Jipe is waiting, anticipation with both quacking claws. The crushing coils would have it no way other than this one. He would kill them both, rain earth, one supreme. Not brought low by these amphibious lice, aquatic life forms. Even if they band together as one force against the death that comes dressed in scales. Even if by herself she was too strong. Chao Chuliche handled both, and now he cannot distract himself to the Gulf Ocean lobster. This is not fairness. This is not the fight. This will not end well. Hell yeah, that was badass. What I like about it is it's super genuine. Like, someone else could have fucked it up by just trying to, like, go for laughs because of, the like, the subject mantle. But you really, like, you can tell you have a passion for the subject and it comes across super well in that poem. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. I I really enjoy comedy in pretty much any form, uh, including horror. But uh, for my for my own writing, anyway, I I tend to play things pretty straight, especially if they are fairly bizarre. Yeah, that's a good that's a good move, I think. What's the name of the book again for those listening? The name of the book is the Configuration Discordant from Things in the Well press fantastic and i'll have a link to that uh, book in the show notes as well so anyone wants to go buy it just click click the link uh how can folks find you online uh people can find me online uh through my own web page uh madnessheart.press where we uh have a blog and publish and uh we do a couple of podcasts as well one about monsters and uh one where i also uh talk to various writers and and crazy people such as myself called Wandering Monster and Madness Heart Radio. Fantastic. Well, John, thank you for doing this. This was fun. Thanks for having me. It was a blast. All right. Bye. And that was John Baltus, Bilbo, a professional kaiju poet. If you enjoyed today's episode, hey, why not go throw us a buckle to uh, Patreon at patreon.com slash publishing. Lots of cool uh, bonuses you can get if you uh, pledge now, right this second. Do not delay. Um, once we reach all 500 double stretch goal, we will begin releasing episodes of Ghoulish two times a week instead of just one. Now oh, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, that's all. Go leave a review. And, uh, you know, live spooky and also die spooky. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha. Cough. 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 Goodbye.